And so in this case, we're going to say no 529 plans. The money's just growing on the balance sheet. We're going to go ahead and take out student loans to pay for college, which is that 5% interest rate ends up having a total debt of 290000 But here's the thing. You tell your child at the beginning of this process, who pays for college if they don't finish? They do. So they own the student loans if they decide to go to school for a year and a half, and then they think they got the next Facebook and they're going to drop out more power to them. And if they're right, they're going to have no problem paying that loan off. But it's not, it's going to be their responsibility. Now, some certain things happen. My, my wife and I call, there's consequences that we as parents put on them. And then there's natural consequences, which are my favorite. Like, hey, be careful playing in that tree. You could fall out and they fall out. I don't have to spank them. I don't have to do anything. It's just like, Oh, I'm so sorry you fell out of the tree, honey. Do you remember? And I told my kids this weekend, like, do you realize you almost always get hurt after mom and I say, hey, that could be dangerous. And then you fall and get hurt. And we're like, well, sorry. <laughs> That's natural consequence. Here are the natural consequences for our adult children when it comes to college. Number one, they get a chance to learn what it's like to borrow money and how interest and compounding works. They're naturally going to think more about where they're going to attend college because they know this liability could be theirs. It feels a bit more like spending their own money. Your money stays on your balance sheet and continues to grow while they're going to college, which means we do not have to go risk off four years out because now we have a much longer investing time horizon. And then you can make the choice to pay for college in deeply and different radical ways compared to put it in a 529 plan and then go through the procedure of cashing out the 529 plan every year. Uh, looked, something's bugging me. I got to say something about this. Oh, that family with the 529 and free full ride and oh, but you got to spend yours. Like literally in that situation, I'm thinking about a better account that they could have started with that 529. Just called a garbage can in the corner of their yard that's just constantly on fire for the ne for the last 18 years. And just every day they're just putting a little bit more cash into that yeah, they would have had light at night for some bonfire. They would have had some warmth from it. They literally Roasted got marshmallows. more benefit. Yeah, more benefit from that money than having it put it into the five twenty nine in that that case. I know, and this is so wild. And our view on that is so deeply unpopular, not for any grounded reasons, not for any reason anybody could give us, but because feelings. Like, if feel, what do you mean five two nine? I've spent a lot because, by the way, if you're listening to this right now and you spent ten last ten years hammering money into a five two nine plan, you might be ready to defend five two nine plans for no other reason other than your conditioning of having put money in for a decade. Now we're going to help you with that before we're done about what to do, but for now, just roll with us here. Here's what it looks like differently now. Remember, we don't have to go risk off, which instead of having two hundred fifty thousand when the child goes to school, we have three thirty seven. And we can keep the money invested for another five years while that child manages to fit and cram a four-year education into five years. Yeah. So here is the same overlay, but now with that debt creeping up of 290000 Now, on the parent's balance sheet, we have 474000 Now, keep in mind, I'm saying this as money being set aside at 7% every year in, say, a set of investments that are academically allocated, globally diversified. But you know what else it could have been? The parents could have bought the building their business is in. The parents could have bought in three rental properties. The parents could have invested money back into their business and had many multiples time more than they would have had at 7%, all things not possible with the 529. I'm actually being more generous to the 529 by simply saying it's the equal yeah. amounts. So we can see that the money that we borrowed from college has continue to increase each year, but now we have on the parent's balance sheet $474,000 that we can now do something very different than everybody else can do after the graduation ceremony. Just think of it, taking your child out to lunch after and saying, you know, we've been talking about this for a while, you graduating college, us having set aside this money, but now we're going to give you a few choices. You owe 290000 and what we're going to do is your parents, we love you very much. And A, you can just take on all the student loan debt, the 290000 you just pick up the payment, you run with it, it's your responsibility, and we give you all 290000 It's our gift to you. You can pay off the student loan debt or not. Maybe, maybe you've got the next best investment. Maybe you've got the next Facebook, the next, you name it, you're going to start in your garage, but you need a quarter million dollars of funding and you'll have it. Because we, as your parents, set aside the money, and now all you have to do is pick up your college loan payments. Or if you don't quite trust your kid enough that they might make the best decisions with that, you can split it. You can say, we're going to give you 40000 cash, 
as your parents, we're going to take the remaining amount of money that we have and we're going to pay off your student loan debt in portion. And you're going to have $40,000 of debt, but you're going to have enough cash to down payment on an apartment, maybe get a dependable car and some new clothes for your workplace and have a little safety net money on your balance sheet. It'd be a great gift. Many of you listening to this will wish your parents had been able to do that for you. Or last but not least, you could just put them in the position like they would have been if you'd had a 529 plan and said, we will be responsible for 100% of the student loan debt. We'll just write one check, pay it all off. You don't need to worry about it. That would be great. And we put ourselves in the same position, but here's what it looks like financially. You see, if out of the 474,000, even if we pay off $290,000 of student loan debt, we now retain money on the parent's balance sheet. So instead of having that 700 and some thousand dollars of lost opportunity costs from having paid for college overall, now we still have 414,000 on the parent's balance sheet. Having alleviated over half of the lost opportunity cost of college, even if we still chose to pay it off in total. And it gave us different choices for how we could pay for college when college costs came. Number one, maybe it would be better off to take it as a 401k loan because of however laws, rules, and tax regulations might work at that time. You could take a home equity line of credit. Maybe that's the best thing. Maybe you're a corporate executive working somewhere and you're exercising some stock options and you just have more than enough cash. Maybe you're a founder who just sold your company for an eight-figure exit and it's just no big deal to write the check out of cash you just got from having sold the business. Maybe you're old enough. You could take a distribution from an IRA. Maybe you're just going to pay it out of cash flow because you have enough extra savings every year. You're just going to pay for it. Or last but not least, you might be able to buy an investment property right near campus. You know, Corey, we talked about that in the book, Sound Financial Advice. Like, mm -hmm. you could just buy a fourplex right on campus. Your child gets a couple roommates in their unit, gets the other ones rented out, has to be a landlord, has to help market the property. Oh, by the way, they have to be paid as a property manager. So we just tax deducted part of their education while shifting money to their lower tax rate. All things you know, not possible in the 529. What I love, so putting money into a 529, whether it's you start right at birth or some amount later when you start doing the college savings, but let's say at birth, cause it's even harder. The earlier you start, the more it's forcing you to perfectly predict the future. Mm. Like, like you have a crystal ball and you're going to put money in a 529 plan because you know exactly how things are going to go in the future. This alternative method to build your balance sheet first you know, that conversation with your kid at college graduation, you get to make the choice then with the full assessment of the kind of person that they've become and everything oh, yes. you know about them at that point in time and what they can handle. And I think that's the huge, huge key. It's not that it's got to be a 529. That's the problem. It's just, that's the name of the thing right there. But anything that requires us to perfectly predict the future that far in advance is going to be a problem for our life. Well, I, I and I have to rat out my industry on some of the things that I was taught early on 20 years ago is right about the time 529 plans came out. And I was literally taught, and if they don't use it on their children's college, the parents can pay for it to go to a French cooking school and it would pay for da, da, da. And I'm like, but wait a second. To use their own money, to not have the money that was theirs originally, only because they put it in this kind of account with the intention of doing something good with it that then wasn't needed. Child went to trade school. Uh, child went to community college the unthinkable of we outlived one of our children or the fact that they're just like, Hey, I just want to go to an inexpensive school and I'm not going to use all the money. Right. All of those things make it so that now we have to do something extra like travel to, blah, 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 to go back to school. Like, I don't know about you, but I probably would rather, you know, hike to some new locations, backpack the Pacific crest trail rather than be in a position that to use my money, I need to go take cooking classes in France. <laughs> but the bottom line is, this is an extra $414,000 by age 65 that the parent could have had potentially instead of putting in a 529 plan and having spent it all if everything remained the same. Now, here's what I would estimate. Corey, in that situation, do you think the kid goes out and spends a full quarter million on college if they know they might be responsible for it? I would think definitely not. Yeah, just simple definitely things. Not. We had one child, one parent recently rolled us out to their like 16 year old. First thing a 16 year old started doing was saying, wait, does it really matter? Like they were Googling, like, does it matter if I knock out my basic classes all at a community college or junior college? Like, oh no, it doesn't matter. Oh, 
And then I can use those transcripts as a part of my parlay to get into the bigger, more expensive school. Oh yeah, and I save a bunch of money. Oh, that's a lot less risk for me. Okay, because it's their risk now. Thanks for tuning into our channel. I hope you got value from that. If you'd like, reach out to us, info at sfgwa.com and schedule a free philosophy conversation with me or one of my team. We'd love to see where this philosophy might best help you. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell.